My name is Roy Graf. I'm the managing director for EMEA at Dragon Trail. And uh, I've been with uh, Dragon Trail since uh, the beginning of this year. Prior to that, I've been working for about 20 years on the Chinese outbound tourism market. And I've written the book, China, the Future of Travel, uh, that introduces the Chinese outbound travel industry. Today, we're going to talk about um, the Chinese outbound, uh, the Chinese online travel sector uh, with a focus on outbound. And just a little bit of information about Dragon Trail. We are a full service and award winning travel technology and digital marketing agency. We help travel and tourism organizations and hospitality organizations, uh, tourism bodies and companies to reach and connect with China's outbound travel travelers. Um, we focus on content marketing, original uh, campaigns, creative, mobile um, systems development, software development and uh, digital solutions for both consumer and trade B2B marketing. And we have four offices in uh, three in China and one in London. Some of our clients include Destination Canada, Los Angeles uh, CVB, uh, Germany, Spain, the European Tourism Commission, Thailand, um, hotel chains and hotel brands like Plantis, Dorchester Collection, Small luxury hotels of the world, and as well as uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines, Hertz Airlines, like School to Tiger Air. And today we will cover uh, the online travel landscapes of more of the major players and some of the latest developments in terms of acquisitions, mergers, and uh, investments. And we will discuss uh, some of uh, the user ex user behavior online. We'll take you through uh, in more detail some of the, um, China's major online travel platforms and uh, review sites and explain how you can work with these platforms. Just to mention uh, before we uh, proceed that uh, you can ask questions by using the Q&A button that is uh, in the panel and then the questions will be answered towards the uh, end uh, after we finish the presentation. This will take about 30 minutes and then about 15 minutes for Q&A. Right, so we uh, will dive straight in. Now, in China, most of the travel still takes place in a traditional way, offline, and uh, only about 25% of all travel uh, bookings are taking place online. In 2015, it was 20%, 2016 is about 25%. It is growing, but the majority of uh, travel bookings still happen offline. And I think that is something that uh, is very, very in mind that when you're looking at this market and, and considering where to invest, you still, First of all, you should still go and speak to uh, traditional travel agencies and to operators in China, but also remember that the market for online is going to grow and grow substantially. The uh, total value of uh, tra travel agencies um, reached 365 billion in 2015, and uh, online travel was uh, 73.5 billion. Uh, we're projecting that the uh, digital travel sales are going to hit 110 billion this year. That's 20% increase over the previous year. And um, as you can see from the chart, from the chart, from the uh, chart, the uh, percentage change is still in double digits. Also, bearing in mind uh, from the chart on the right is that mobile is now really the leading, uh, the leading um, platform for uh, and, and, and for accessing and booking travel and uh, most of the OTAs basically are consistent report consistent uh, data with this so over 70 percent booking through mobile platforms so in China we like to talk about BAT, Baidu, Alibaba and Tencent these are the three conglomerates of digital they all have um, uh, they all started from a particular place. For example, why do uh, dominate the search market with uh, their, the, the answer to Google? That's uh, by doing China. Alibaba come from e-commerce and uh, basically providing uh, e-commerce solutions through Taobao and uh, Tmall, and they're also invested in, in, uh, tra in, in travel. And uh, Tencent uh, came from a uh, music, media, entertainment, and again uh, launched uh, WeChat, which has now become the uh, the, 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 the major uh, social media and communications mobile platform in China. Now, all of these groups are invested in the range of uh, travel-related companies and apps, 
and they also cross invest in each other's companies. So while this looks quite neat, in fact, a lot of these companies then have shares and equity in companies of the other groups. Um, bearing in mind that uh, uh, both Alibaba and Tencent have, have their own payment solution as well. And uh, while most many Chinese use uh, cards, use the China Union Pay when they're paying online, uh, increasingly they are using mobile payments through Alipay and WeChat Pay. And uh, these companies are aggressively pushing that to be used by Chinese travelers when they're going abroad and expanding overseas. We're going to be discussing this a bit later. Um, in terms of uh, uh, what these companies are, uh, Baidu uh, is the leader in search, although there are other search engines in China, and then it owns 25% of Ctrip, which in turn owns uh, almost half of Chunar and a large section of proportion of Elon, which is a competitor OTA, and they also are invested in uh, Tujia, which is a vacation rentals website. Tencent um, have uh, social media and uh, communications tools like QQ and WeChat. WeChat has over uh, almost a billion active users now in China and, and around the world. And it has a, a stake in Elong, in uh, ly.com, and also uh, cross investment in Tunio, which is another OTA that uh, has a lot of uh, group, sells a lot of group travel. And then, of course, Citrip also then has investments in uh, these companies. And uh, it, Tencent also has a stake in Made to One that we'll um, discuss a bit later. Alibaba is an e-commerce platform. It, uh, as I mentioned, uh, began by uh, um, helping with international trade um, and helping to source materials and production in China for uh, global merchants, but it's uh, basically evolved into a full e-commerce platform that combines eBay and Amazon. And uh, its investment in uh, travel started with creating a company called Alitrip as a marketplace for travel, which then was rebranded as uh, Fliggy, which is a marketplace. It basically means that they provide a shop uh, front for companies and destinations and brands that want to sell travel. And they basically charge uh, uh, rental of the real estate rather than taking commissions or being involved in the actual booking process. So it is different than how an OTA uh, model works. What, it, what they have is even though they're very new and uh, maybe not as experienced in travel, they have direct access to all of Alibaba's customers and they know their credit rating, they know how much they spend and what, what are their, their preferences in terms of shopping. So that's a lot of really important uh, big data that can help them uh, segment and target travelers. And then Mate One Travel uh, is a company that was invested by both Tencent and Alibaba, uh, and it's become one of the leading sellers of uh, air as well as uh, hotel. So uh, because of uh, the focus on e-commerce and trying to make that much easier for, uh, for users in China, payment has become really important. And Alipay uh, is comparable to, say, PayPal in, in the West. Uh, Alipay uh, is owned by uh, Alibaba and there are 450 million users. It's got a, a high market share, and it is now heavily investing in expanding overseas and getting merchants all over the world to accept it as a, as a solutions provider. They've opened offices across the world, and uh, that's a major focus for them this year. Then their competitor, WeChat Pay, uh, is built into the WeChat app. Um, so there are 600 million users of WeChat Pay. Uh, it's used a lot within China to buy anything from dumplings to uh, pay for uh, uh, taxis and uh, settle your bill in restaurants, etc. And, and of course, WeChat is also trying to grow that globally and get uh, merchants, uh, shops, hotels, restaurants around the world to accept this as a payment solution. Um, in both cases, you, you need to work uh, with uh, uh, local uh, solutions providers and gateways that will basically connect you with, uh, with Alipay or with WeChat, you can. it's hard for uh, SMEs to work directly with them. And then to complicate matters further and to add to the competition, we also uh, uh, recently saw an announcement that, that Baidu signed a deal to basically allow uh, all PayPal merchants around the world to also accept the Baidu wallet. And uh, while Baidu wallet is used by about 17 million uh, people in China, it's again an op opportunity for them to grow on the strength of all of the PayPal accepting merchants around the world. So we need to watch this space, but it's going to get quite
quite crowded and interesting. The online travel market is uh, broadly divided into different categories. So OTAs that are basically follow the merchant model and uh, process the payment and guarantee the booking for you and obviously will take care of you if anything goes wrong. To MetaSearch, uh, like Algola or uh, Tianchun, which is the sky scanner brand in China that basically uh, compare the prices for you but send you to the merchants after that. The marketplace model of uh, Fliggy uh, is really uh, designed to allow the brands to showcase themselves and basically drive traffic to them, but let them uh, basically figure out what they want to sell and how they want to sell it. Whereas review sites like uh, Dianping, uh, Chongyo, Birdtrip, Mafangwo, um, and TripAdvisor are uh, focused on content, on uh, reviews, itineraries, and uh, through that, they also are selling you travel. So there's a lot of crossover. Uh, we also have um, recently new arrivals of the personalized travel planning platforms that are essentially mobile driven, they're mobile first, and they allow people to create itineraries and then book the, the travel plans that they've made. Um, and there are lots more apps that are, are in this space. We're just kind of uh, showing you uh, examples of the, of the leading ones. Um, and also to know that um, while Citrip, for example, is mainly an OTA, they also provide marketplace solutions. Um, and while Chongyo is really is driven by reviews and travel writing content, they, they allow you to book travel directly through partnerships with uh, Booking.com and with Ctrip for, for Air and also with Skyscanner. So there's a lot of crossover here. Now, the consumer behavior um, in, in China, uh, it goes like this. We know that uh, from surveys that over 60% of the under 45 year olds prefer to go online. And with people over 40, 55, uh, are, have a slight preference to go for offline booking. Now, uh, this is rapidly changing, and uh, with the uh, with population, you know, basically now aging, um, the, the 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 it's going to be skewed towards kind of a, uh, basically people uh, being older, but also more kind of technologically savvy. Um, and we think that uh, that means that the solutions that are provided online will need to kind of change and cater for, the, for that market. So we uh, looked at um, uh, what websites are being used for destination research. So how do people research their, uh, their travel and uh, how that differs uh, per age group. As you can see, the vast majority of people in all age groups go to online travel websites and apps like Ctrip, Tunio, or Tuna are basically well-known brand names that so you can search and compare prices and look at reviews, et cetera. Um, less than that, you have uh, general search engines like uh, Baidu, uh, and after that, uh, marketplaces and, uh, and shopping malls like uh, Adutrip or, or Fliggy now. Um, so, uh, but for, um, for example, for the uh, medium kind of size groups of 25 to 44, uh, expert travel guide websites like Chongyo, QIR, and Mafangwo are also quite popular. And this is more sophisticated market, shall we say, sophisticated uh, target audience. For uh, the booking channel, uh, when people are booking standalone products, um, by far when uh, people want to book flights only, um, then they would go to uh, a website or an app of an OTA, uh, similar for hotels only. And, um, uh, and then for things like car rental and destination, it's a little bit more skewed. People also tend to go to um, basically a travel agent and book in person with a travel agent, uh, or they would tend to basically go directly to the supplier. Ctrip um, seem to basically account both for FIT and, uh, and tour groups for the, the largest uh, uh, share of the market for online booking, followed by uh, Chunar and then uh, Tunio. And as you can see from this list, uh, some of these uh, brand names like CITS, for example, uh, Spring Tour um, are, are actually not online companies. They're offline companies that have an online uh, basically shop front and they sell online but uh, they're mainly selling offline. 
So they have uh, a lot of recognition and, re and brand reputation. And uh, uh, foreign companies like uh, Priceline, Nagoda, and Expedia still have a very, very small market share in China. They only really are used for uh, outbound travel and um, uh, they, they are still limited in terms of like uh, issuing refunds in China and, 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 accept, and fully accepting uh, local payments. So um, it means that they're not used as much. But for more sophisticated audience focusing on long-haul travel, I would say that they are used more than what is indicative in here, which is a total for the entire market that includes domestic. Now, uh, number of travel app users are really, have already increased threefold since 2015. And 8% uh, of all travelers use apps when they travel uh, to both book hotel, book transportation, uh, buy travel-related equipment, uh, book attraction and tickets, uh, and, and read travel guides. So that's really an important uh, message that uh, mobile really seems to be the way to go and, and you need to have a mobile first strategy in China. Uh, both Ctrip and Chunar have been the dominant players uh, for domestic and outbound travel. There was a big price war between the two of them until they basically agreed to effectively uh, swap shares and uh, cease the, the fight. So they both basically have shared uh, board or, you know, uh, people on both boards um, manage that and uh, that has kind of uh, uh, allowed them to focus on different things. So c focuses on more kind of high-end travel and customer service and Chunar focuses on uh, domestic and low-cost travel. Um, but uh, we can see clearly that, that their apps are the most used for travel bookings. So a little bit more in detail about the specific online travel platforms that we have been discussing. Ctrip is the largest and most successful OTA. It has 500,000 hotels directly uh, bookable in China and 670, uh, sorry, um, yeah, 670,000 uh, internationally. And they also, they are working directly with, um, uh, they have an investment from, uh, from Priceline that allows them to access the uh, booking.com inventory as well as uh, working uh, reselling Expedia inventory. They're focusing on first and second tier cities. Um, and they do a lot of work on to get business travel as well as uh, working with travel agencies on the B2B uh, model. Um, but generally on average, the room cost tends to be uh, relatively high. They have 140 million registered users uh, and uh, offer a high le higher level of customer service with VIP kind of membership card. Chunar started life as a meta search engine, but uh, uh, built uh, kind of had, has basically built their own payment platforms and solutions for smaller hotels and operators to be able to uh, transact online. And that was how they were able to really grow and give a much broader range of, uh, of products and to, to, to basically compare. Uh, after the acquisition, it uh, basically uh, started focusing much more on uh, low cost, low end market, and uh, the room cost is around 150 to 200 RMB. Uh, Tongchen, or ly.com, uh, is based in Suzhou. It's an OTA, and it's now considered the second largest OTA in China, uh, known a lot for selling attractions and uh, tickets and, and, and tours, with 200 million users in 2015. Tunio is based in Nanjing. It's uh, one of the biggest online travel agencies. They do basically uh, both group travel and individuals and um, offer a wide range of tours that people can basically sign up to and join an existing group that uh, is traveling to lots of different countries. And they um, also provide, I mean, all of these companies provide marketing platforms for destinations and for brands that want to uh, basically raise awareness. And we can discuss it a little bit later. Elon is also one of the oldest OTAs in China, around the same time as Ctrip, but uh, they are not fared so good. They used to be a part of the Expedia group with a, a majority investment from Expedia. Expedia then basically um, sold the shares and, um, and, 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 and it became um, majority owned by uh, Ctrip. So Elon are based in Beijing, whereas uh, Ctrip is based in Shanghai. They um, are basically specializing in hotel bookings and are stronger in North China than in other areas. Meituan Travel is uh, um, merged with uh, Dianping, which is a restaurant and uh, destination and attraction review site. And uh, it's a relatively new travel and leisure platform 
that basically uh, has become one of the leading sellers of domestic uh, flights and uh, hotels. And uh, Wo Chu is a Shenzhen-based OTA that um, uh, basically create uh, help uh, design itineraries and specialize in FIT products for local market, especially the U.S. So, how would you engage and work with the online uh, the OTAs in China? First of all, uh, it kind of depends, obviously, on what you're offering. If you're a destination or a brand and you want to raise awareness and then treat it as an advertising opportunity, there are ways to work with them as, uh, to basically create partnerships where essentially they offer you uh, advertising banners and um, bespoke destination landing pages where they can provide uh, brand awareness and also link all the products that uh, include your destination in one place. So. Lots of countries and brands work uh, in this way, so uh, that's one way. Uh, also, you can um, uh, you are it's not possible to uh, provide APIs to distribute product like hotels. Uh, it's possible to um, work with them on niche products uh, for their specific kind of verticals when you're talking about adventure travel or family travel and things like that. And um, uh, it's also quite important to read and and um, track the travel reviews and what people are writing about your product and service and engage with that so learn for learn from it learn people are writing about you and, and how they review you and then engage and respond to them um, on these platforms so with some of the ideas you can actually create a business profile to allow you to engage and then reply to inquiries and to reviews um, and uh, there are different ways to distribute it, uh, and, and every idea will be different, but uh, there's something that we can advise on, but you can also contact them directly um, on the product side to, to see you know, how you can work with them individually. Now, uh, CTRIP uh, overall, with, as a group, uh, with all of its brands, occupies 85% of the OTA market share. And this uh, gives an indication of how they grew uh, since their inception. It was founded in 1999, and uh, it basically grew through uh, aggressive brand uh, building as well as expansion. It's um, uh, acquired uh, and invested in companies in China, not just uh, OTAs, but also hotel chains like Home Inn um, and uh, two operators in uh, Taiwan, in Hong Kong, and in the USA. And last year, they also bought Skyscanner and Make My Trip in India. It is uh, the largest OTA, and uh, it provides a full range of services. So basically, um, anything you can think of a travel, leisure travel, business travel, package tours, sightseeing, pretty much everything. Um, for uh, the ability for, for advertising and brand recognition, there are ad opportunities um, that you can take advantage of. And then they also provide media solutions like uh, uh, direct SMS uh, promotions, as well as uh, 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 coupons or vouchers that are attached to the uh, to confirmation emails. So there's a range of solutions that they can offer for promoting. Um, one of the uh, uh, recent uh, uh, developments that they've uh, added is basically hotels that are uh, have made an effort to uh, become more Chinese friendly to provide amenities for Chinese, uh, to offer information in Chinese, or maybe have uh, customer service in Chinese. Uh, will get a label of Chinese preferred hotel, as you can see here. And um, that will basically, it's something that you can filter by to help customers make, uh, make an informed decision on where to stay. Some of the uh, form platforms, just to touch on them um, in China, like Expedia, uh, Agoda Booking, and also um, Airbnb, are again all trying and, 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 and working hard to uh, penetrate the market. That includes localizing their name and uh, their, their domain name in China, uh, fully localizing the website, and taking Chinese payment. The, um, the main issue is that they, you know, they can't really enjoy uh, or ride on the brand recognition they have around the world. You really have to start from scratch in China and dealing with uh, very, very large uh, kind of brand recognition of C-Trip and Elong and, 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 and Chunar. So it's an uphill struggle, but um, they're considered quite reputable and have really good, you know, people think of them as having really good rates for uh, long haul international hotels in, um, uh, in America, in Europe, and Australia. So uh, their market share is slowly growing, uh, but 
But again, the brand recognition is really only there amongst the more sophisticated uh, clientele in the first and second tier cities, people who have traveled more, maybe lived or studied abroad. But of course, there are also many, many other players. Um, and uh, those uh, include uh, uh, companies that, that uh, provide vacation rentals and uh, apartment stays, um, companies that help you with your visa application and, um, and, others, and other smaller search engines, as well as traditional tour operators like Kaisa, U-Tour and CYTS. Um, a little bit about travel uh, websites that provide you with a personal itinerary. Uh, Trinan Mao or Navi Travel and uh, uh, Leo Renio um, are basically designed to uh, work across money and mobile and allow you to create, uh, to design um, kind of unique tours. So uh, through these uh, sites, if you have something that's quite unique and, and different, then it, it, it's, it's kind of more of a, of a niche travel platform that uh, you might, you know, might be suitable for you. Uh, meta search in China uh, is traditionally, you know, quite a tough place to be, and there aren't that many, uh, but there aren't, you know, also not that many around the world. So, uh, Skyscanner localized uh, to be Tianqun in China, and uh, after it grew to a certain size, uh, it was bought by Ctrip. Igola is too independent; it's a travel meta search from uh, Guangzhou, and um, they provide uh, uh, search comparisons for hotels, uh, flights, and car rental. Um, but uh, I think that the, the you know the dominance of Ctrip um, and now that Ctrip also on Skyscanner means that people may not really trust that it is uh, uh, fully objective. Um, Fliggy uh, from Ali from Alibaba is uh, a marketplace platform, and it hosts a range of travel shop fronts that are basically similar to say kind of an Amazon shop. Um, it provides uh, a range of travel bookings for domestic and international, and uh, as well as package deals and attractions. And it deal it basically partners with brands like Marriott or with destinations like uh, countries um, to basically like Canada, for example, to offer a essentially a mini website that then links to all the different products that they offer from their from their individual merchants. And uh, they've entered into several partnerships with NTOs, hotels, and airlines. And these are some of the case studies and examples of, uh, of those partnerships. Travel review sites. Um, the way that you might want to uh, consider working with travel review sites is basically, again, the first thing is to learn about what people are saying about your destination or your product. Uh, creating a profile where you can basically uh, offer advice, offer support, uh, answer questions, help with travel planning and itinerary planning, and, and, and basically address any concerns people have, especially if something is negative, you want to basically know about it and deal with it as soon as possible. They all provide advertising opportunities, and many more are now, many of them are also uh, creating opportunities to add distribution. So basically, people can read about the destination. If they like it, they can book straight from that uh, uh, destination activity page. And um, so if you're already, for example, distributing through for an OTA like Booking.com, you might already be there. Um, if you are a standalone kind of package uh, or operator of something quite unique, then there's an opportunity to be listed in, uh, in, in, in the travel review um, apps. And some of them create a large number of different mobile apps for different destinations and different activity types. Ma Fang Wo is one of the leading ones with 550 million registered accounts. And um, it's got basically 30 million daily page views, um, but it has evolved to selling a lot more um, uh, product now. And basically, um, it creates individual kind of city guides where you can basically plan your itinerary, read about different information that you need, but also book those services right away. Uh, overall, the large number of users are, are, are younger than 65 and uh, are generally high earners. And uh, this gives you some example about their kind of uh, background and education, occupation. Um, so I'll let you study it more in depth uh, when you receive this uh, presentation because we're going to email all of this to you uh, tomorrow. Chongyou. Um, 
qyr.com. It's uh, pronounced Chongyong in China. Uh, it's basically started life as a travel kind of blogging or travel log uh, portal for for travel writers to share their experiences, and it's evolved into one of the most uh, highly influential uh, outbound travel uh, planning uh, portal. So people read about uh, the people's travel and they can uh, look at copy their itineraries and then share those and plan their own trips. Um, it's got a lot of travel reviews. It's got a lot of, uh, kind of influencers that um, uh, have become very popular and uh, are then in turn employed by some destinations to provide advice and how to plan how to travel to particular places. Uh, it's got a big community kind of bulletin board, a travel forum uh, where people can ask for advice from other travelers. And they also created a large a number of different mobile applications that uh, allow you to basically, you know, like travel guides um, and a marketplace for last minute uh, packages and special offers uh, where you can, for example, list a, a, a limited availability or limited time um, package and sell that directly to the users. Um, they tend to be predominantly female in terms of the user uh, of the gender mix uh, and high range of a uh, high percentage of white collar and uh, uh, and executives. So uh, they, you know, in 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 Chongyo, you can basically go through uh, reviews and read about reviews, and a lot of these reviews become very influential and are shared widely. Um, there's a lot of cross sharing, for example, of these reviews on uh, on WeChat, for example, where people can share it amongst the network. So um, it doesn't really stay only within the within this uh, website. But you can definitely learn a lot from reading the reviews, looking at what people like and uh, share in terms of images, um, and uh, and learn from that about how you want to design your marketing strategy. Uh, the content for the travel guide is uh, in both the case of Mafongwo and uh, Chongyo is basically crowdsourced um, from users' posts uh, and then basically curated and edited by by, by in-house editors. And um, basically, as I mentioned before, it's possible to work with them to provide through an API link or through a standalone kind of booking engine to provide uh, another distribution outlets, uh, whether you're um, selling a particular accessories or um, whether it's hotel or, or visa services, flights, crews, et cetera. Um, they're all interested to basically make money from commissions uh, utilizing all the traffic that they generate. So uh, as I mentioned before, for a lot of these uh, review sites, some of the writers have become very influential because people like the reviews, they follow it, they rely on their judgment and on, on their experience. And uh, uh, these KOLs, uh, key opinion leaders, uh, in turn become kind of mini celebrities. And um, some of them are directly um, employed by the platforms. So they can be basically commissioned to go and write a particular piece or uh, to, to send them on a fam tour to report and, and write about their experiences. Um, in addition, it's possible to cooperate with them on offline events because they have large communities in the bigger cities and those communities are very active and interested in travel. So if you have something really interesting as a destination or an activity or um, so a cruise, for example, or whatever it is, um, you could actually work with them on an offline event that is usually also live streamed online. And then, of course, uh, there's opportunities to advertise on their websites and on their mobile apps uh, in different formats. So that's part of the uh, um, advertising kind of network. And that's something that when you're managing ads, you want to basically specify where your ads are going to go. So they're really targeting a relevant and kind of highly qualified audience. Uh, a little, uh, so um, in China, TripAdvisor um, is not the biggest uh, review sites. Uh, their Chinese name is um, called Mao Tuin, and uh, it also provides a range of different uh, tour reviews, and they translate a lot of content from other languages into Chinese. But what's interesting to note is that Chinese generally prefer to follow and read and trust um, reviews written by other Chinese, not something that was written in another language and translated to Chinese. And that's something that uh, TripAdvisor initially didn't really uh, plan for, but they then realize that they need to do that. They need to incentivize and encourage more Chinese people to live user to uh, to write reviews. 
Uh, other review sites uh, uh, like Tianping and Redtrip um, are focused on uh, mobile again. And uh, Tianping is uh, started out life reviewing restaurants and food entertainment, but they're now going more into attractions and, and travel destinations, but also, you know, restaurants and entertainment around the world, not just in China. So uh, increasingly in some of the big cities, say in Europe, you will see not just a TripAdvisor um, sticker in the window, but also a Dianping uh, sticker. So people can, can review them on uh, Dianping. Redtrip uh, allows people to create uh, a map and basically tag themselves uh, in all the locations that they go and then uh, leave reviews about it. So people can then follow their itineraries uh, and also um, uh, gamify that experience. So um, this is the end of the presentation on online travel uh, platforms. There is obviously it's a huge topic and there's a lot more that we want to cover in uh, future audience, in future um, uh, webinars, which we'll basically um, let you know about. If you, have, uh, if you want to know what's happening on a regular basis about the Chinese album market in terms of developments and trends, uh, you can follow us on uh, Twitter, it's Dragon Trail, or on LinkedIn, where we post uh, regular news. Twitter is probably the, the place where you can get regular news, but also you can sign up to our uh, newsletter on, um, on our website to receive a monthly uh, digest of the main news and developments in the market. Also, um, I'm going to um, answer any questions that you, you have now uh, in the next uh, few minutes. And uh, in the meantime, I would also ask you if you can uh, take um, a, a few minutes to before you uh, leave um, the webinar to um, answer a short poll. So I've published a poll on the, uh, uh, in here, and uh, this will basically just a few questions to get feedback about what uh, other uh, topics you would like to see covered in the next ones. I mean, we're going to be covering quite a few of the topics, but maybe which is the most important one that you would like to see um, in the coming months. So um, just to answer some of your questions, the presentation itself, the file will be sent to you by email. Um, we're going to um, send you um, a link to download the presentation in an email uh, probably tomorrow or the day after, so definitely within this week. And uh, I have a question about whether uh, as a DMO, so as a destination uh, management organization, is it recommended to manage destination reviews and Chinese travel review sites? And uh, I would say that uh, if you're a DMO and you have a, an agency that helps you with marketing in China, part of the job should be to monitor all the travel review sites and um, basically track whenever your destination is mentioned and talked about and be there to respond to questions and to address any concerns people have. It's quite important and it shows uh, people that you care and it will actually uh, gain a lot of positive attention if you do that. So if you have, uh, I mean, that can be done with a, uh, either with an agency that supports you in China, but also with uh, a Chinese staff or an intern, for example, a student intern that you can ask to, to do this kind of monitoring. Uh, and pay attention to what people call your, your brand. It doesn't only for, uh, only not only for DMO, but for any kind of uh, travel brand. Uh, sometimes the name that they use for you in China will be different from what you know. Sometimes they use different, you know, mo multiple variations of a name in Chinese. Um, uh, so we have a question asking for a breakdown of high-end, mid, and budget travel. Um, that is difficult to do in a, in a short webinar because the market is very fragmented. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, some OTAs focus more on the high-end market. Uh, there are other uh, niche uh, players that um, uh, only focus on luxury travel. And normally, luxury still tends to be kind of offline as a whole because they need a lot more service and attention. So. I can't really offer a full breakdown because uh, obviously that will look at uh, a number of things, not just how much people spend, but uh, when do they travel, how far they travel, which destination. So this information exists, but it's essentially uh, more of a market research report that we'll need to kind of get into detail. And I believe that in future, we'll probably focus on, for example, only the luxury travel market uh, in one webinar. So come back for that and, and learn more. Um, Next question, besides Mafang Wo contributors, are there digital influencers that are a big thing in China like YouTube and bloggers in the USA? Um, well, uh, WeChat and Weibo are the two top uh, uh, social media platforms. 
And there are quite a few influencers, KOLs, that use those channels. Some use Weibo more, some use WeChat more. Uh, some of them have several million followers, some of them only have a few hundred thousand. But if it's the right type of uh, followers that you that will resonate with your service uh, and engagement rate is high, then they are going to be quite influential for you. Some of them also charge a lot of money. And um, I think that you know we, we work with uh, a range of influencers in the travel sector that t tend to have a range of different platforms where they operate. It could be WeChat and Yoku, which is the equivalent of YouTube in China. And um, they, you know, it tends to work best when, when you know that they really are engaged in, in, in your destination. And they really, uh, the users know that they, they are organically really enjoy going there and traveling there. Uh, one good example was with New Zealand that um, uh, there was a very famous actress that uh, have visited New Zealand and really loved it, basically on her own, and uh, posted about it. That got a lot of attention. So then New Zealand basically jumped on that, the New Zealand Tourism Board, and invited her to uh, to hold her wedding back in New Zealand, uh, all paid for, and that generated huge uh, positive PR uh, for them. So the answer for that is that yes, there are, and um, it's a question of how much you're willing to spend on them and how much you want to really get engaged with them. And of course, so so uh, that's something that you know, if you're interested in that, um, speak to us directly. Um, so, uh, we have a question about uh, experience of partnering with OTAs. So what is the most effective way to raise awareness and drive bookings? It very much depends on, uh, on your product, so uh, we'll have to know a bit more about what you're offering. The OTAs have a lot of uh, suppliers obviously coming to them and wanting to work with them. If you are um, uh, a destination, then they usually are looking for a partnership that means you're spending money with them, but they will also contribute money and time and effort into, into promoting uh, your destination and the relevant products because it's driving also business to their uh, hotels and tour packages etc if you are a supplier like a hotel um, then it is more about things like uh, for example being more chinese friendly so investing in amenities and, and training uh, and being able to show that uh, in your in your product description making sure that the product is, that the description that you have wasn't just translated by um, by a third party like a bed bank or another OTA that, that basically was in the middle, but that you are actually directly responsible for the content and the description of your product and uh, being engaged in the review. So that's basically what you can do without too much um, money. If you are looking for uh, other solutions, then it's more then you basically need to start negotiating and basically speaking to the product managers of the OTAs. Um, there normally there isn't a cost. So there's a question about whether there's a cost to create a profile at travel review sites. Um, some platforms charge you if you want to open a business account, a business profile, but usually that means that you can also are allowed to then sell or promote services. To create a, um, a profile at a review site or own kind of claim a business so you can answer and respond to uh, reviews and questions is generally. Uh, free of charge, but of course you'd have to invest in the time uh, and somebody that knows how to to speak to the um, to the users, um, and that's where you have to have those that resources available. Um, there's a question about sea trips, uh, um, high high percentage for escorted tours and also for FIT. So yes, yeah, sea trip basically. Um, aggregates a lot of content from lots of different tour operators. So they sell other uh, products of other tour operators. So when it comes to groups, they can they create a lot of their own groups, especially the ones that are quite simple, like uh, fly fly and uh, you know basically flight plus hotel. Uh, but they do it as a group, and then people can individually go and enjoy the time in the city. But they also resell from other tour operators and wholesalers, and they work with a lot of wholesalers in China because people tend to like to go in a group. For a particular city where they can all speak the same dialect. So somebody from Beijing wouldn't necessarily want to travel on the same group as somebody from Guangzhou. So there's different departure points, but also things like culture and language and food are very different. So for that, if you want to be a national OTA in China, you really need to operate with wholesalers that create these groups and basically you resell them on an individual basis, uh, but you do that all over China. So if there aren't uh, any more uh, questions, I will um, 
uh, ask you again to kindly fill in the, the poll. And um, um, just uh, one final question. How would you recommend department stores and shopping destinations to promote themselves in OTAs? Uh, for retail outlets uh, as a destination, uh, there are different number of different options to do that. Um, of course, uh, with uh, review sites, uh, they review outlets and retail as well. So you can basically get engaged with that um, and provide listings and, and uh, engagement with the, with the users. Uh, with OTAs, a lot of it is about uh, either uh, directly marketing and advertising with them uh, or uh, negotiating uh, incentives. So offering um, a free gift with purchase for people who are traveling to a particular destination. If they come to your shop, uh, uh, offering unique and exclusive discounts to uh, members of a particular um, uh, group, like a VIP group of, of one of the OTAs and things like that. So uh, I would say that's uh, how you can start with. Uh, but there are, of course, uh, many other kind of campaigns you can do independently that can have a tie-in uh, or joint promotion with a particular OTA. Okay, um, thank you very much. And um, I look forward to seeing you again on our next webinar. Um, if you are attending a World Travel Market in London, uh, we will be uh, running a uh, major uh, conference together with PATA on the Wednesday 8th of November, which will focus on the rise of the independent Chinese traveler. So if you are WTM, don't miss that. And uh, we will be also uh, speaking at other events around the world. Uh, to hear more about that, uh, please follow us on Twitter or, or uh, subscribe to our newsletter. And if you have any specific questions, you can um, find me at uh, roy.graf at dragontrail.com or contact the email that you see on the slide and uh, with your queries, and we will basically uh, respond to you. So uh, thank you very much for your attention, and um, see you in the next webinar. Bye-bye.